Hi, my name is Jonathan Standing. I'm a freelance concept artist, illustrator, story artist, and part-time teacher. Um, this uh, tutorial is for Imagine Effects magazine, issue 117, and the tutorial is in answer to the question, how do I make my skies look more three-dimensional? So what I understand from that question is kind of like, how do you stop your skies from feeling like they're a flat card kind of hanging in space? Um, very often when we paint clouds or skies, there's a tendency to almost treat them like they're a backdrop in a, a play, um, you know, where it's a piece of canvas that's lowered down from the, the rafters and maybe it has a sky painted on it, but it has this kind of very uh, flat sort of feeling uh, to it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of really quick and efficient techniques um, in Photoshop for making that effect kind of go away a little bit and for your uh, clouds and skies to feel more, like they have more volume, more depth to them. Here I'm drawing in the most generic scene possible. Uh, we need some kind of ground plane for this sky to play against. Um, so here I'm making a, a desert with rocks. Um, it, I'm just making this purely for the sake of the, um, the, uh, the demo. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely not in love with this image. It looks really generic to me. I, I, if I had a do-over on this one, I think I'd try and make the rocks more interesting and give them sort of more meaning. But um, this is generally how I draw things in Photoshop. I'll work in a distinct separate layer um, with a flat round brush, make a bunch of line work, reduce its opacity, make a new layer over the top and then try and strengthen and improve that line work. Um, here I'm dumping in some tonal value onto the rocks and the desert, trying to differentiate um, the value of the rocks and the sand a little bit. The rocks are slightly darker. Um, but then also try and begin to have that sense of atmospheric perspective of the distance of these things kind of moving away from us. You can see I've flipped my canvas here. Um, if you're not in the habit of doing that digitally, um, I, I highly recommend it. I do it traditionally as well. I have a giant hairdresser's mirror that I carry around in my bag um, that I use to flip uh, drawings. If you have a light table, or even if you're just working with semi-opaque paper, it's really easy to flip things and, and see where you've gone wrong in the composition. So I created a, a second layer kind of behind the mountain and ground layer and put in a gradient. Um, if you look at the sky, almost whatever the weather, um, it's not a solid tone. There's a variety of tonal value in there. Um, and here I'm working in a, another separate layer with a cloud brush that was given to me by a coworker years and years and years ago, but it's kind of my go-to brush for cloud shapes. Um, I have it both as my brush and my eraser. Um, so I'm building the shapes with the brush and then subtracting from the shapes with the eraser. Um, I get the same kind of quality of edges, um, but what I do is just work additively and subtractively to try and make the shapes of the clouds as interesting as possible and begin to kind of imply some depth by making the clouds closer to me larger and the clouds further away smaller. So what I'm using here is the uh, perspective uh, tool and the transform tool set. Um, I'm compressing the clouds that are further away and expanding the clouds that are closer to me. Um, basically, it gives the effect of the clouds being more or less parallel to one another and kind of zooming away to a vanishing point somewhere on the horizon. Um, in the same way that you might use uh, a street or um, lamp posts, fence posts, trees, some kind of repeating unit um, in your landscapes to give that sense of distance kind of marching away from you, you can achieve a similar effect with clouds. You could see what I did there was to use the perspective tool to shift the um, vanishing point of the clouds, first to the left, where it was over top of the mountain, so it was a pretty obvious mistake, and then over to the right, which kind of gave the composition a little bit more balance. Here I'm painting in some shadows on the underside of my clouds. Um, while no cloud is 100% opaque, sort of light always passes through them, um, the thicker the more dense the cloud is, the more likely is it is that you're going to have a shadow underneath it. And so having some kind of acknowledgement of the lighting scheme for your scene applied to the clouds is another way of making them feel kind of solid and connected to the environment in which they're floating. Uh, I've darkened the foreground elements here just to try and differentiate them a little bit more from the sky. And I've played a little bit with there with the silhouette of the foreground rock mountain thing. It was really, really blah before. It's still pretty blah now, but it's, it's definitely an improvement. Um, so here I'm just adding some value to the mountains in the background. 
I think that when I blended the horizon with the sky, I went a little bit too far. So here I'm trying to kind of claw the mountains back and have them stand out a little bit more distinct from the sky um, so that we have that kind of separation between the, the sky and the ground. And what I've also tried to suggest is the idea of um, patches of sunlight kind of peeking through clouds onto some of these rocks, mountains, and the ground so that the light passing through the clouds is kind of reflected uh, on the ground below. So here I'm working in a color layer um, in the uh, transparency drop-down menu in the layers palette. Um, I put a gradient of color in the sky where it moves from a very cool kind of blue down at the bottom to a warmer kind of more um, purplish blue up at the top. Um, on a sunny day, if you go outside and you have a look at the sky, you'll notice that gradation in terms of tone. It's almost gray at the horizon. It moves up into kind of like a, a, a blue and then as you look almost directly above you, you'll notice that the, the sky has a very slightly kind of purple sort of cast to it. Um, given that my um, main light source here is sunlight, it's white light but with kind of a warm orangey yellow cast to it, um, I'm casting that kind of chroma up onto the upper sides of the clouds, um, but I'm trying to keep the undersides of the clouds that nice blue color. The secondary light source for this image would be the sky and the atmosphere itself. So there's light bouncing around in there. And so um, what we would get is that blue um, hue kind of um, cast into our shadows where the sunlight isn't falling directly. So by having that contrast of uh, color uh, or chroma in the, um, the clouds, the warm to the cool, I think that also helps to kind of accentuate that feeling of, of depth um, and also roots it in the lighting scheme of the environment. Um, I consolidated some of those shadows on the, the ground plane. I think that really helps too. Um, and then I went and used a really soft brush to try and soften some of the brushwork and the divisions in the, uh, the clouds, just so that they're a little bit less noisy. Um, what I'm trying to do here, I think, is kind of like paint in a secondary bank of clouds that's kind of hovering in front of um, the, the one in the background. A really, really quick and simple way to make, give clouds and sky some depth is to have more than one bank of clouds. One is kind of in front of the other. Anytime you can kind of overlap things um, in your composition, you can articulate the fact that there is dimension or space in between them. Um, and so I think having these kind of two groups of clouds here is quite effective um, in, in making it feel more three-dimensional. So this image is really calling out for some kind of narrative, even though I've given it no thought whatsoever. If you can have like a bird, a plane, a ship or anything flying in your sky, that's another really good way to kind of give it that sense of depth. Uh, you know, there's something happening in it. There's a, an object or a creature or whatever it is that's kind of moving around in the sky. And in this case, it's in front of the clouds. Um, I could have had it interact with the clouds potentially if it was a really, really big ship. And actually, now that I say that, I kind of wish I'd done it. Um, but as it stands right now, it's some kind of atmosphere craft, I guess, rather than like a spaceship maybe, um, that's flying around, buzzing around in these clouds. Um, here I'm just trying to kind of finesse the, the cloud shapes a little bit with my softer brush um, and my cloud brush, just uh, giving myself some soft edges um, where there's a gradient from uh, light to shadow and then some harder edges where I'm actually seeing the edge of the, the cloud itself. Um, also in the middle of the composition you can kind of see some holes in the clouds where you can see through to an illuminated bit of cloud away off in the background. That's just a really nice technique for kind of making it also feel a bit more three-dimensional. Um, so I'm casting some of that blue light that's uh, being uh, shone from the, the atmosphere down into the shadows on the mountain in the background, just to help it feel a bit more three-dimensional, but then also to apply atmospheric perspective. As things move away from us towards the horizon line, we see, we see them through more and more kind of layers of the atmosphere. And on a sunny day, uh, with the blue sky, that generally means that things get more and more blue as they get further away from us. Uh, they usually get lighter tonally as well. Um, and our ability to perceive distance, uh, uh, to perceive detail rather at a distance is you know greatly reduced. So I've really softened the shapes and the detail and the mountains in the background. And um, here I think I'm just trying to have some, some more light fall on, um, on this foreground rock. The um, upward facing uh, planes of the, the rock, which are facing more directly towards the sun, are brighter and a little bit less saturated. 
Um, but then kind of the sideways facing uh, planes that are receiving some sunlight, but not directly, are a little bit more saturated. That's kind of the true color of the, the rock, if you like. Um, the design of this ship, it, well, it's not really even a design at all. Maybe these are kind of like two rotors or something in the middle. Um, and here I've given it some weird sort of like animal fins <laughs> for wings and uh, uh, sort of gack around the thrusters at the back. And um, the other thing that this scene is really crying out for is some kind of human element to kind of give you a sense of what the scale is. So I've put a little cloaked figure on the top of the, uh, the foreground mountain there. Um, and I've surrounded him with some, um, I don't know what they are, aerials or something. And then I just used the skew tool there on the, uh, the um, aircraft just to uh, make it feel a little more three-dimensional. Had some bounce light cast up from the desert uh, onto the underside of it um, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And uh, we're more or less done. Anyway, I hope you found this enjoyable, informative. Thanks so much for listening.